Okay, what we're looking at here is a Farnell PSG520. It's a synthesized signal generator and it's capable of producing 10 megahertz to 520 megahertz. And it does it to uh, four decimal places. And uh, does a very nice job of it. Right now, I'm using a, a Hewlett Packard 54201A to display an output. 201A is a 300 megahertz scope, it's the rating. I'm re right now I'm reading a 400 megahertz signal. So I'm really pushing this scope. It's another 25% beyond its range. Um, because of that, there isn't much qualitative as far as, or quantitative I should say, data that I would try and trust here. We've got a lot of loss going on. But you can see the signal. You can see it's sinusoidal and, uh, and it doesn't look distorted and the peaks are, are, are all the same uh, average size. And then as I, uh, as I dial down, let's see we go to 300 here. Okay, we're going to watch everything reset itself on all auto scale. And we'll be right at the, the rated limit of the scope, but, um, but at least in this case, we should be a good signal. Here we go. All right. So that's a nice looking signal and we've it's right now running uh, about uh, 80 millivolts well see we can't re peak the peak here we're on a 150 millivolts per division and we are running about uh, plus or minus three divisions so that's a 150 millivolts peak 300 millivolts peak to peak that's coming out of the right out of the Farnell the Farnell uh, allows you to modulate the input so you could say uh, well if you wanted to put voice in there and you could transmit uh, short distance uh, you could put in tones uh, so you could modulate with a tone um, you can turn the carry around and off we have internal or external modulation we can go uh, AM modulation or FM modulation either one um, and then you can control the modulation level. You can turn it up or down, it's in percent. Turn it off. Uh, it's BCD uh, type switches here. Uh, you could um, choose any one of these. So you could have, uh, say, 299.9999 if you wanted. Uh, let's try that just for kicks. Alright, there we go. And there's our output. Nice clean output. Let's take ourselves down to 199. We should have less loss, a little more signal. I might even have to auto scale it again. Yep, we're going beyond the. Uh, boundaries a little bit here. Let's uh, auto scale and bring her back in line. There we go. And um, That's 199.9999. Just for kicks, let's uh, take it off of the scope and let's put it onto a uh, counter. And uh, let's display some frequency counts here. Uh, we'll use the uh, Valentine. First thing I notice is I am at 199.999.5, and uh, I'm going to guess that the 0.5 could be the, the synthesizer, but it just as well could be the Valentine. So the uh, the fourth decimal place is off by a by a 0.4, uh, and since that would be megahertz. 
that's one megahertz. There's uh, 999 kilohertz, so this would be hundreds of a hertz, so we're about 400 hertz off, according to this uh, counter. Now let's say I uh, go to zero. So we just dialed in 190.000. Zero megahertz. So this Farinell is the beauty of it is that it's a synthesized generator. Um, let's say you compare it to a uh, a Heath kit. I've had some experience with Heath kits. Uh, I've owned seven of them. I've sold uh, six of them. They're a nice general uh, tool for uh, for experimentation and alignment and so on, but uh, they do drift some. Uh, they are not amplitude controlled, um, at least not very tightly, and certainly they uh, uh, they're not real stable as you go across the range. Um, this Farnell. Is, uh, produces a signal that is far more spectrally pure and uh, it's crystal controlled, it's rock solid. Um, dial in your, your desired uh, say IF frequency or whatever and, uh, and then apply it to your circuit and then go in and start tuning. You don't have to worry about the fact this thing is drifting and you're gonna have to go back and retune to, to take care of the drift and so on it's going to produce a signal that is exactly what you wanted. And the knowledge of the frequency of the signal is important too. So, so we have the uh, Farnell working at 10 megahertz, which is the low end of its range. And the frequency is being shown on the uh, oscilloscope here. Nice clean waveform, nice and stable. And then we can go ahead and turn her up. Give it a moment to lock in. There we go. Thirty. All right, and then forty. Sixty. Seventy. So 100 is the limit of this particular scope. I could push it a little further. We could probably see 200 if I flip around here. Okay. 300 and we don't have anything. Two ten. We're not able to lock. That's my scope. Or 110 megahertz. That's, that's double the uh, response it's capable of. So, but as you can see, the the waveform was clean from 10 megahertz up to 100, and uh, that's what I wanted to show you there. Now, let's uh, let's give this thing a little AM modulation, and 
So we'll go ahead and expand the uh, the waveform so we can see it better. And give it the AM modulation, and there you can see the modulation. Let's turn up the uh, intensity a little bit. Okay, there's modulated. Not modulated. Modulated. Now I can increase the percent of modulation by turning the dial here and you can see the response on the indicator and as we do that you can watch the waveform increase in modulation intensity or amplitude and then back out again. And then on the FM side can show you some FM amp modulation, but it's difficult with... Here you can see the modulation, the FM modulation on the wave, shaking the, the wave in and out, you know, following the frequency, changing the frequency, and then here is unmodulated, modulated, unmodulated. Alright, we have the uh, basically uh, as stable a wave as I can get where I'm bringing uh, 10 megahertz in from a separate generator on, on channel B and I'm using that to trigger channel A where I'm displaying the Farnell's 10 megahertz and uh, we can see the uh, 10 megahertz off of the Farnell and it's essentially steady obviously not totally I can adjust it a hair here try and there we go now as I bring the modulation up we're gonna lose that stability because we've injected additional frequency components into that waveform and right now I'm at 50% uh, and that's with a 10k component and if I go to 100 I'm sorry that was the 100k Let's bring up the 10K. You can see us getting more and more out of frequency as I go up. And then back down again. There we go. So the FM modulation is working on this thing. It's just hard for me to display it because my trigger didn't want to let you see it. Okay, we have the Farnell set at its uh, lowest range, which is 10 megahertz. And we have the uh, output being displayed on both the oscilloscope and the frequency meter. And uh, right now the frequency counter, uh, a Ballantine uh, 600 megahertz frequency counter, is displaying 10 megahertz to within the least significant digit, which is three places, versus the Farnell's four places, so that's good. And the waveform is clean and, uh, and steady. And uh, let's just adjust this a little bit here. All right, I think we got that. All right, so now let's uh, let's go ahead and take her up uh, scale. We'll go to twenty. We're gonna. Watch as the uh, phase lock loop latches in. Uh, right about here. All right, so now we've got 20 megahertz. Let's go ahead and do 30. All right, there's 30. 40. You'll see this little spring. We're going to see a spring in the... There's the spring. And we'll have one more and we'll latch in. There we go. Now we're at 40. 50. 1. One more. There you go. 50 megahertz. 60. 
One more. There's 60. 70. Spring. One more. There we go. 70. 80. If we get to 100, we're going to go 100 megahertz steps. There we go. 90. Spring. And there we latch. And then let's get to 100. Spring. Latch. 100 megahertz. Perfect on the frequency counter and a nice clean uh, waveform the whole way. Um, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to expand the waveform, turn up the brightness a little bit. Because now we're going into regions that this scope just wasn't meant to go. Uh, we're at 100 megahertz right now. So as I go higher, uh, we're going to lose it. When I Actually, 200 is going to be the limit for this scope. Hundred, three hundred. We're not going to see it on the scope anymore. Yeah, just a ghost, tiny little thing. There's three hundred on the meter. We did see the uh, the higher range, uh, three hundred and four hundred megahertz on the uh, Hewlett Packard on an earlier v uh, video. So I know you saw that. Let's go 400, and uh, at this point I'm just going to disconnect the scope. There, we've latched in on 400. 500. Okay, right there, we've got 500. There's our latch, right there. And then 520 is the limit of the unit. I'll take it up to 520 right now. And I think we've latched right there. So there we are, within one uh, least significant digit uh, on the Ballantine, and uh, probably it's just a matter of a, of a touch-up on the Ballantine to get that perfect. But that's pretty dang perfect. So the, uh, the Farnell was capable of producing exactly the frequency that we wanted. We saw a real nice clean waveform up to uh, approximately 300 megahertz. I couldn't see it further on here. But on the HP, you did see it go up to 400. 